Okay, so now we're into air quality. I think we're halfway done with my presentation. All right. So a history of uh, US clean air legislation, uh, the Clean Air Act of 1967 um, focused on technical information associated with air pollution. And then the Clean Air Act of 1970 established uh, the, the standards, the National Ambient Air Quality Standards or NAAQS also required states to prepare and implement state implementation plans to show how they could achieve these, these uh, new standards. So the Clean Air Act um, amendments of 1990 included strategies to achieve and maintain the NAAQS approaches to reduce air pollutants from mobile sources and enforcement sanctions for not achieving and maintaining the NAAQS standards. So, okay. So the the EPA is the um, has a key role. They establish the new and revised and or revising the existing NAAQS. Um, in 1970, they established the standards for the six criteria criteria pollutants: ozone, nitrogen dioxide, uh, particulate matter, sulfur oxides, carbon monoxide, and lead. So these standards have been reviewed and updated by EPA since 1970, with the most recent changes uh, being to the eight-hour ozone standard. So EPA must designate areas as meeting attain as meeting or not meeting the standards. So if you're meeting the standards, you're in attainment, and if you're not meeting, then you're in non-attainment. Uh, the Clean Air Act requires states to develop a general plan to meet the standards. Um, this plan is known as the State Implementation Plan, or SIP. Each um, standard is based on one or more averaging times because with, with an air sample, you can't just uh, take a sample and send it to the lab because there's so much variability when, you're com when you could get wind or you know, you know the time of day will go into like what your reading is gonna be. Um, and we'll see that in the next slide. Um, the primary standards protect public health, while a secondary standard uh, protects um, other things like such as decreased visibility, um, crop damage, and effects on the built environment. So here's a table um, that lists all the, the criteria pollutants. Um, so, and it tells you whether they're primary or secondary uh, standards, and then it has the averaging time and the, the level, the concentration that you can't be, and, and then how, how, when it can't be exceeded. For example, for carbon monoxide, the one hour averaging time, it should not be exceeded more than once per year. So for these um, standards designations, um, all areas of the U.S. are designated with respect to each um, standard. So I think we talked about attainment is if you have air quality better than the NAAQS. Um, Non-attainment is you're not meeting the standard. If you're in maintenance, um, that was an area that previously um, has not has not been has been not in attainment, but are, has been redesignated as as being in attainment. And unclassifiable means no data to make a designation. So all areas of Florida um, are in attainment right now. So that's good. So the state implement implementation plans are prepared for all areas designated non-attainment or maintenance, and they're not prepared for attainment or in unclassified areas or unclassified areas. Um, two main purposes of the state in implementation plan, 
is to demonstrate that the state has the basic air quality management program in place to implement the new um, stand or revised standards and to identify the emission control requirements the state will rely on to attain or maintain the standards. Okay, so it's project specific air quality analysis. So air pollutants and FDOT documents. Um, so the ones, so the ones that are analyzed for are carbon monoxide, and the other ones are not analyzed. And particulate matter is not analyzed is not required because um, you know Florida conforms to the 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 standards the particulate matter standards. And the greenhouse gases, um, the discussion includes standard FDOT text. So we're gonna be looking at carbon monoxide. Okay, so carbon monoxide modeling, the goal is to determine whether the project would cause or contribute to violations of the national one hour or the eight hour ambient air quality standards. So the levels of, of carbon monoxide tend to be highest immediately adjacent to roadways and intersections. Uh, therefore, FDOT evaluates levels of this pollutant for all projects. So for SEERS, um, the screening test using the, the CO Florida carbon monoxide Florida 2012 model is needed when um, the total vehicle vehicular delay time at an intersection in the design year build condition is projected to increase when compared to the design year no build condition or the project is expected to have community controversy regarding air quality in coordination with district specialists may be required to determine potential community controversy. All right, regarding particulate matter, construction activities generate dust from earthwork and mobile sources traveling on unpaved roads. This is minimized by an adherence to all applicable state and regu local regulations and to FDOT standard specifications for road and bridge construction. So all areas of Florida are currently in attainment for the particulate matter air quality standards. Um, consequently, quantitative analysis concentrations resulting from transportation projects is not required in Florida. Quantitative modeling on is only needed if EPA were to declare Florida as non-attainment. Okay, so if an air quality analysis, you know, for carbon monoxide um, is performed, then the results should be included in the environmental analysis section of the SEER. 